All right, so we got one of these Yehua, I believe that's how you pronounce it, 939D uh, soldering iron station. I've had this one for probably a bit over a year now. Um, I think I picked it up for about £60 on eBay. Um, and it's, it's served me quite well and it's still going, but I thought, um, you know, for the interest of you guys out there and myself, we would uh, have a quick look inside and uh, just see what the build quality is like, really. Um, not expecting much transformer um, microprocessor unit of some sort. Um, we'll just have a quick look inside anyway and uh, see what we find. Right, so to get inside this, we've got four screws at the bottom there on the bottom of the unit. So we'll take those out and see what we can find inside. Screw that. All but one. We've got so four screws now got removed. So let's see if this lid just slides off. Not as easy. It has got a sticker across the back here, so I'll have to get a uh, sharp knife and just cut through that. Okay, I've cut through that sticker now, so let's lift the lid and see what we've got inside. Wow, <laughs> certainly not much at all. Uh, we've got our transformer in there. And has that got a rating on it? Output is 11 volts and 26 volts. So both uh, 11 and 26 on the output there. Let's have a look at the wiring. We've got a strain relief in here. Not too bad. I mean it's only held down by one screw. But it doesn't look like they've actually left themselves anywhere to actually put another screw in. Um, otherwise we've got our earth wiring here and we've got a cable feeding off here which must be going straight to ground but it's not the right colour really being red um, switch here fairly nice switch all in all I mean the cabling's not excellent but it's not that bad um, this here if I can get you in a bit closer this corner here we've got these two cables here I mean the soldering on them is pretty shocking really as you can see they've left a lot of excess cable um, you know it's easy for that to be bent over really um, and short those two out so not best impressed with that and um, we've got a regulator up in the corner up here I'm not quite sure what that is that one and I'm guessing we should have some more circuitry on the underside of this board. Now I'm not going to bother taking the whole board out, um, but we'll just have a quick look and see what's in there. So hopefully you can see in there now, this is our connector here for the iron, screw connector there, multi-pin connector, got ceramic capacitor in there, resistor, it's the LCD display screen, um, it's right at the bottom there, it's a bit hard to see, um, it looks like there is one chip very much buried right in the corner down there but I don't think you'll be able to see that fortunately. Um, but yeah I don't think it's really worth taking the rest of it apart much further than that. Um, 
but yeah, all I can say is it's, it's, it's okay. It's um, it's done pretty well for me. Um, and um, you know, I mean, I probably will like to get a Heiko one um, eventually. Something a bit better quality and slightly better build quality. The only thing I would say I do like about it is it's it's heating up speed is really really excellent it's really quick at heating up seems to hold the temperature quite well um, although I haven't tested it with a thermocouple to see exactly how well it is um, you know gaining the temperature back once you've obviously started heating the pads on your circuit board um, but yeah all in all it's not too bad for the price, I guess, um, but it's obviously a Heiko ripoff, hence the um, the colours with the blue and the yellow. I'll just get the last screw in. I'll just have a closer look at the outside of the unit as well. Okay, so as you can see on the front of the unit, my Hula brand, got the heating light there, that one actually lights up blue on this one, I have seen another video where it actually uh, was lighting up red and was very slow at flashing, this one does actually flash very very rapidly and does heat very quickly. It does say it's a lead free one, um, I believe there's a calibration pot hidden underneath there, you've got your dial here and then you've got your display there as well and then you have got the heat recovery graph there as well which just gives you a bit of information about its uh, heat recovery over time at certain temperatures there and then the iron itself you get this holder plain metal holder little spongy bit and that's the iron itself see it's obviously been used. You can unscrew it and I think you can use normal HECO tips, replacement tips for these and you can actually take these elements out and replace them as well if need be. Um, the only thing I would say when I first got it I wasn't actually applying much pressure at all to a surface but I managed to snap it completely on this plastic um, so I got onto the uh, eBay seller and they actually um, happily sent me a replacement iron for the uh, unit. So anyway, that's the uh, Waihula 939D soldering iron station um, and a quick look inside it. Um, I have also got a um, hot air station as well by the same company. Um, I'm not going to bother taking it apart because I think Dave on uh, EV blog did actually do a full teardown of one that he had and mine is very much similar to that so I'm not going to worry about that at the minute. Um, on the other hand, on other news, I've actually got a new desk now, as you can see. It's not massive um, but it do start as the problem is I haven't got much room in here. Sorry about the video shake there, I haven't got much room at the moment um, to put anything else in. I did get rubber. ESD matting. That with postage was about £50 pounds, um, and seems to work fine. So yep, yeah, so that's the uh, that's today's video looking at this soldering ice station and I'll try and come up with some more videos for you guys soon. Cheers, thank you for watching. Cheers.